Hi, I'm Chrissy O'Malley, and this is Better Science Teaching. What I'm going to show you today is a little glimpse into what happens in my classroom, first day of chemistry, when we do the exploding can demonstration. Uh, it's intentionally a demonstration and not an experiment because what I want students to do is practice using their science notebooks, taking observations, and asking questions. So what you'll see in this video is me doing a demonstration where I put methane inside of a coffee can that has two holes placed in it, one on the top, one on the side. And those two holes, um, when you light the methane on fire, as it escapes out of the top hole, you eventually see it explode, it pops up off the table. So you'll see that in the video if you watch it. Every student in my class is required to have a science notebook that's got graph paper in it. Uh, I think that that's really important because it makes it possible for them to make really good graphs. And it also helps them to be able to construct tables, which we're doing all the time in lab classes. Throughout the time that we're waiting to see what happens with the can, what you're gonna hear is me asking students um, what they're observing and how do they know what they know. Uh, that's something that becomes a theme throughout the class. And this is really just the first time that they experience that. If you keep an eye on the can and maybe even pause it and put it in slow motion, what you'll see is little flames escape from the bottom, which is kind of cool. You don't, it's hard to see that in person. Um, another thing that you might notice is that there's a ring of darkness on the, on the countertop. Um, and that's where water vapor is condensing onto the table, which is another cool thing that you don't see in person. Lastly, the thing that I don't show you is the output and what the students are creating. Um, during part of the, the activity that's not shown on camera, students are asked to draw a comic strip about what they think is happening to the particles of the methane and the particles uh, in the gas around the can. Uh, what's happening while the flame is really bright and tall? What's happening when the, the methane is still lit, but the flame is much shorter and difficult to see? And then lastly, what happens when the can explodes? And so. Um, it's an opportunity for students to start drawing particle diagrams. In my class, we start with thinking about matter as gases uh, and the particles that are spread out and around us in space. I hope that you enjoy this demo and you get something out of it. If you have any comments or questions, please post them below. I'll be happy to uh, give you some feedback on that. Have a great day. Stay safe. Be well. I'll see you soon. Enjoy the demo. Bye. Yes. All right. So we're going to try it again. <laughs> I think for a bigger explosion, I need a bigger can. So if you guys want to find me a bigger can, I'm willing to try that. This is like a legit torch. All right, so we lit it again. Does everybody have the flame in their notes? We'll figure out what flames are in a little bit. When something burns, what has to be present? What was that? Oxygen. Okay. So is there is there oxygen? Did I put oxygen in the can? No. Where's it coming from? It comes from outside of the can, right? So we know that we've got a flammable gas inside the can. We have oxygen outside the can, and that's allowing that fire to happen. What's fire evidence for? What happens when something is burning? Luke. A chemical yeah, so there's probably a chemical reaction happening there. It probably involves the methane and the oxygen. So we at least know that much, right? Did anybody incorporate those ideas into their picture? Why are there holes in the can? Oxygen. So Go ahead. So that's the oxygen and the it, it seems that it could allow for that, right? We know that the flame is where the hole in the top is, and then there's a hole in the bottom, right? Why don't I light the bottom hole on fire? Why would methane come out the top hole and not the bottom hole? It's lighter, right? What do you mean by lighter? Less dense, okay. And so the less dense gas is coming out the top, so what's with the bottom hole? You want to, don't you? <laughs> so is it trying to get out? What would happen if we had a can and we only sucked the air out of it? You guys ever seen that experiment where you take like a soda can and you heat it up? It'll crush, right? Because the air pressure on the outside will force its way in. Well, it'll force, it'll force the can to crush. 
this way, if we have a hole in the bottom, it allows gases to go in underneath. So literally, my husband and I, we had a problem that's related to this. You ever go to take the trash out and you go to pull the bag out of the can and it's stuck and it won't come out? And it's not because it's irrationally heavy. It's because of air suction. So my husband and I, we buy a new trash can that's solid at the bottom and they make them solid on purpose. Trash cans are solid on the bottom so that like if you have food spoiling in it and your bag breaks, you don't end up with spoiled food all over your floor, which is great. But it also doesn't allow you to pull the bag out because of suction. So we actually will drill a hole in the side of our trash can to make it easier to pull the bag out. Okay. Yeah. By doing a hole, I can see the trash can. Mm -hmm. And so by having a hole in the bottom of the can, and why it hasn't gone yet, I don't really know. Um, but by having a hole in the bottom as that methane, there it goes. As that methane moves up and goes out of the hole in the top, air from the room can go inside the can and replace it so that our can doesn't get crushed. So that's cool. So that means over time that methane is burning and air from the room is going to the inside. So what's, what's the point then when it explodes? What, when, when does that happen? Do you think there's still methane inside the can when it pops up off the table? Do you think the methane would burn if there was no oxygen? No. It probably wouldn't, right? This, this is a thing we know. You have to have oxygen for things to burn. Especially things that have carbon, right? That's how our whole metabolism works. You have to have oxygen present. If your body doesn't have oxygen, what happens to you? Die. You are dead. You need oxygen for those reactions to happen. So, you guys, you guys want to know what happens to the can? You guys write your theories down. You, you guys shared a lot of good ideas, and it's a little bit more technical. But putting all these things together, when the can, the can allows air to go in through this hole, and so oxygen from the atmosphere is moving into the can. And there's a point where there's enough oxygen in the can that is mixed with the methane that's coming out the top. That that fire, I always think about it as the fire drops into the can. But there's enough oxygen in the, in the, in the gas inside the can that the whole thing combusts at one time. And when that happens, you create a little bit of heat. Who said heat? Someone said heat. Hot air makes it pop off the table. There's, a, there's just enough heat that this thing will jump up a little bit. And that's why I said, well, maybe we need a bigger can if you want a bigger explosion. Because I bet, I bet you'd get something that looked more interesting if you had a larger can or you had one that was the right shape. Isn't that interesting? Anybody ever wonder why rockets are tall and skinny instead of short and fat? It's because you can, you can force your air out of a nozzle and get more thrust that way. This doesn't have a lot of thrust because it's a coffee can that's rusted on the inside that I use every year. What do you guys think? 